Okay, so in this video, we're going to be introducing the residue theorem, which is just an extension of the Cauchy integral formula. So basically, I'm just going to write the formula here and then explain what the terms mean. So let's say we have any function f of z dz that is non-analytic within specific points on that curve c. Then this is going to be equal to 2 pi i times this function, which is defined, so it's going to be the sum It's going to be a sum of terms, and I'm going to use capital N here. So let's have j equals to 1 of the residue of f of z evaluated at some pole z naught. And basically what this means is, well, we're going to take a sum of residues. So what is a residue at all? So residue is defined as this function. So we have, we're going to take the function f of z at some pole z naught, assuming that the pole exists, of course. So if we have something like this, let's say z minus one, then if this is our function, then we have a pole of order one. So order is defined by little n. So that's order one. And the value of the pole is z equals to one. So essentially this would be our z naught value. And obviously, in a more general case, if we have several poles, what we want to do is we want to sum all the residues of each of those poles. So we would select set one equals to this. And if we had another pole, we'll call it set two and so forth. So the idea is, the idea is that for any pole set J, we're going to have the following formula. So we're gonna have the order of the pole N minus one factorial times the limit as z approaches that pole z j times the so the limit of the derivative so this is going to be the n minus minus one derivative of um, z of this function so let me just erase this a little bit so this is going to be z minus z j to the power of n which is the order of the pole times the function f of z. And this is what a residue is defined as. So it looks a bit complicated, but essentially what we have is n is the order of the pole. So this is the value of the pole. And n is the order of the pole. This is just the n minus one derivative. So if we have a pole of order one, then we put one in here and that gives us the zero of derivative and we should know that the zero of derivative is essentially the same as just multiplying this function by one. So it, it's just the function itself again. And then once we differentiate this function with respect to that, we're going to take the limit and then multiply by this factor outside. And that's going to give us the value of that residue. But of course, if the function happens to have more than one pole in that C, then obviously we need to evaluate those residues at those other values of set or at those other poles and then essentially we sum them up and that gives us the final answer. So this looks a bit complicated. So hopefully the next example will help simplify matters a little bit for you. So let's say we have the function, let's say we want to integrate this, z plus three over z plus two, dz. Now immediately you can see that, let's say we have the curve, let's say we have the curve z equals to two. So that's a circle of radius two centered at the origin. Hopefully you can see that that's a imaginary axis, real axis here. And let's say it's oriented anti-clockwise. So two minus two, two i minus two i. So that's our circle. Now where's the pole here? That we have a pole of order one at the point. So we have a pole of order one at the point or z equals to minus two. And if we look here, that would lie exactly on the boundary of that curve. So does that count as a pole? Yes, because as long as it is either on the curve or inside the curve, we count it as a pole. So if it were outside then, the residue of that would be zero because essentially from Cauchy's theorem, we know that the integral for something that has a singularity or a pole that is outside of the curve C, then that should just be zero because that means that the function is analytic everywhere within that curve C. 
and in this case it lies right on the boundary of the curve so technically the function is non-analytic at that point and because that point is part of the curve C of the region uh, traced by curve C then essentially we need to take it into account so this is going to be an order one because remember this is a linear um, expression here the, the highest power is one so we just treat it as that alright so now that we identify that and that this pole actually lies within C we can proceed to find the residue so we only have one residue because you know, we only have one pole for this function so we're going to have residue of the function f of z which is going to be this whole function evaluated at the point minus 2 so now we're just going to plug these values into the formula so this is going to be um, order 1 so 1 minus 1 factorial that's just 0 factorial which is 1 times the limit as z approaches minus 2 times the derivative of so we have 1 minus 1 that's 0 so 0 of derivative that just means that we just take the function as it is times z minus uh, minus 2 which is plus 2 to the power of the ball which is 1 times the function itself which is z plus 3 over z plus 2 so immediately these two cancel out and this is something that usually happens because for, for non-analytic functions we usually have uh, fractional expressions like this so the denominator will often cancel out with the numerator and that's what we want because that simplifies matter matters a little bit so this is going to be equal this is equal to 1 and now we're going to have the limit of z plus 3 as z approaches minus 2 so that's just going to be 1 right so the value of that residue is just going to be 1 so now the value for integral the value for integral is going to be the following so it's going to be 2 pi i times the sum of all residues but in this case we only have one residue so that means that this is going to be times 1 so this is just 2 pi i this is just 2 pi i and that's a really interesting thing because we just evaluated this and notice the similarity with Cauchy's integral form we could have easily used Cauchy's integral formula here and we can actually use it to prove that we, give, we get the same result but in general the residue theorem is very useful and it is actually more general even than the Cauchy integral form because we can take poles of any order and evaluate integrals of this form so that's basically th the basics of it and in the next video, we're going to be doing a few more examples on this just to solidify the knowledge. And then we're going to go into some applications of the residue theorem for integrating more complicated integrals.